What's up, guys? Um, it's Sam. I don't know if uh, any of you guys have been paying attention to my, the uh, you know, 20, 25 shorts I've uploaded recently. You all know I've been playing with um, strobe and whistle rockets a lot lately. Um, I feel like I've finally gotten them down pretty well. Um, so I, a couple nights ago, I decided I was going to start building uh, some multi-stage rockets. So I just kind of wanted to uh, maybe walk through the process with you guys. And then let me preface by saying this is the first time I've ever done this. So um, I'm not speaking like I really know what I'm doing. I'm just, I'm learning as I go. And I just wanted to share it with you guys. Um, so the first thing I did was um, kind of plan out how I wanted the, the build, what I wanted it to do. And, um, you know, selected fuels that I thought would, would get it done. And then uh, I made a sketch. I mean, any any rocket you guys build, I mean, I I suggest building the sketch. Um, you can get this grid paper. You can get like a hundred sheets, five hundred sheets at Walmart for just a few bucks. I mean, it's well worth the money if um, you're going to plan. Um, and the purpose of building it to scale is uh, if you got any um, doubts about your your RAM or length or um, where you're, if your rammer's marked wrong or what, you know, whatever, um, you know, you can just, um, it's easy to just pop the rammer out, hold it up to your, your sketch and, uh, you know, verify that it's at the depth that you, um, think it's at. Um, so there's that. Um, so the, the bones of the rocket, I'm going to, the first stage is just, a little short um, rocket pressed on a in burner spindle. Um, that one I pressed with uh, gray Sally with uh, ferro titanium for sparks. Um, and just to be clear, I only press the composition with the metal in it above the spindle. You never want to press um, any composition at all with with titanium in it, especially around a metal spindle, um, you risk sparking around it. Um, plus you can tear up your tools. Titanium is really hard. Um, and gray Sally is just, uh, all of these compositions are 76, 23, one, um, just standard whistle mix, but the gray Sally is, um, the catalyst is copper oxide versus, like red iron oxide or uh, copper oxychloride, it's a uh, it's a retro catalyst. It it kind of decreases the the power versus um, increases it, and it's got a really cool sound. Um, the reason I don't I want less power on that first stage is so the rocket doesn't take off on me. I just want it to whistle for a few seconds before it you know rips off the ground. Um, I use Gray Sally on the um, second stage as well. Um, just because like, so I, I, this, this is new for me there as well. Um, a lot of the first round of rockets that I did, I would, I pressed like half a spindle of red Sally and then, um, Benny, uh, potassium benzoate on top of that. And, uh, but I would, I would get a few Kato's, but ever since I, it, it was fairly reliable, but it was almost too powerful, man. It was, I mean, the things would get so high in the air before they um, reported it was, it was hard to even appreciate the boom. You know what I mean? The several rockets that I've flown with the Gray Sally, it's, um, I, I like the, the height a lot better, put it that way. And it's a lot less likely to Cato. Um, so ideally you, on a, from everything I've read and um, researched, the you want as little delay on from your second in between stages as possible, um, but you have to have some delay. So I went with um, blue Sally in between the second and third stage because it's it's really uh, blue Sally's. Um, I used copper oxychloride as the catalyst. Um, which is a really powerful burn. It burns a lot hotter than the red Sally. Um, so 
and I also put ferrotitanium in that as well. Um, just because you want you want the third stage to take off as quickly as possible after your the previous stage is done, um, if that makes any sense. Just so you don't start um, like losing height or you know it starts pointing back towards the ground before that next stage goes off. And then on the third stage, I used red standard seventy six twenty three one red Sally. Um, it's because it's on a way shorter spindle. It's only like a two and a quarter inch spindle, I think. The this one is um, like four and an eighth, I think the spindle is. It's Woody's Extreme whistle rocket tooling. Um, and on that third stage, I used uh, an inch, a full inch, because it should have plenty of height by that point if everything goes right. Um, with red uh, potassium benzoate whistle mix, um, I like the sound of Benny um, a lot, so that should look really cool. Plus, a lot of ferro titanium in there and then I plan to put a 30 to 40 gram flash header um, to, to end it I'm gonna I'm gonna build a few of these before I um, attach a report on it just to make sure it flies right before I um, which I suggest you do on most of your rock all your rockets um, test them make sure they fly first especially if it's new fuel um, shit happens. Make sure it flies right before you uh, strap a quarter stick to the end of your rocket. Um, and uh, I've already done the testing. I know it's it's right, but if you happen to um, try to follow this and put a press your first stage on an in burner versus like a uh, insert tooling, make sure so press the rest of your rockets. Get an idea what kind of weight you're you're looking at on that rocket and fire a test a tester um, like make a dummy load and put it on that end burner attach it to a stick and make sure that end burner is not going to take off because i i the first one i pressed was with um potassium benzoate and that that fuel was too hot it it took off um and had i had that the rest of the rocket attached it would have it'd have been catastrophic. Um, so, good rule of thumb: always test your test your rockets before you do anything crazy with them. Um, so now that I explain the build, let's we'll start putting it together. Um, here's the first stage: the gray Sally and ferro tie. Second stage on the long spindle. Got that blue sal. It's hard to see. They almost look the same on the camera, but it's different. That's blue. That's gray. Um, and then the red Benny. So there's also there's different ways. I've seen different ways to do it. Um, I'm going to sleeve them. It just so happens my I use New England paper tubes. The OD of the one pound tubes are exactly an inch, and I I have one inch OD tubes. Um, I'm sorry, ID tubes. Um, so I'm gonna sleeve mine. Um, I've seen people um, like uh, Caleb from Woody's Rocks. He what he does is he'll take masking tape and just um, barely tape his uh, separate stages together because he he likes whenever they come apart um, mid-air in between stages. Um, I guess you get more power that way. I don't know exactly why he does it, but more times than not like i know florida pyro he does it this way that dude builds some crazy rockets so i'm gonna give his way a shot um that, just a little bit of white glue i'm sure hot glue would work just fine on this too is it um i'm gonna put this probably isn't necessary but i'm gonna do it anyway I'm just going to cut like a you know, four or five inch 
section of just just black match, homemade black match. I'm gonna double it over like that. Insert it into my next nozzle. Got that blush. Just to make sure it ignites. Um, like I said, I don't know if it's a hundred percent necessary, but I'm gonna do it. I don't. I know Florida Pyro does it. Woody, or I'm sorry, Caleb, he doesn't do it. Um, say, man, in Pyro world, there's a there's a hundred ways, million ways to skin a cat, man. So it all, if it works, it works. Yeah, that glue in a little bit, Ugh. and I will do the same thing for the next stage. Sorry, y'all. I'm not very photogenic. I'm not, uh, I don't spend much time in front of a camera talking, so. If I sound like a bumbling idiot, that's because I am. Second motor. I'm just aiming to split the difference on these tubes. Um, let's see that. I can show you all the first one. I just doubled the black match over, kind of. Half ass stuck it in the spindle hole. And just kind of left it out long enough to where I, I think it'll touch the delay of the previous motor. There's that. And then, like I said, I'm not going to... Um, put a huge salute on this one i just want to make sure it, it flies right like i said i got a i got a bunch of these motors pressed i'm gonna i shouldn't say a bunch i got a few of these motors pressed i'm gonna um, test a few of them out make sure they fly right and adjust course if need be um before i put a big old salute on it i'm just going to use um, um little bit of whistle mix well, whistle and strobe. So what this is is I uh, um, before I just recently bought some good commercial tube supports, and uh, before I bought those, I was using PVC with some cheap ass pipe clamps, and uh, the I busted a few pipe clamps when I was pressing rockets and I, I couldn't dude I probably blew out about 10 maybe 12 strobe and whistle rockets and blew out the sidewall of the tube and made them completely useless um, so what instead of just throwing them in the trash I cut them open and crush the fuel back up and I've been using them using this fuel in headers it actually makes a nice little pop but it's not quite as um, violent as, as flash powder uh, put a little glue in there don't be shy with the glue There's that. Look at that. That's a fucking rocket there, y'all. Put this explosive shit away.
there's any newbies watching this, man, whistle mix ain't nothing to play with. It, uh, it's dangerous stuff. It, uh, they say it's almost as energetic as 7030 flash powder. Um, and I believe them. I, uh, I've seen the shit go off. It's not pretty. Really cool, but it ain't pretty. Um, normally I just use one stick, but on a rocket this big, I think I'm going to go ahead and use a second one just for the fuck of it. Um, probably doesn't make that big a difference, but I always um, angle the top of my stick just to, like I said, it probably don't make that big a difference because I'm using a flat header, but uh, they say it helps if you um, angle your stick a little bit, so I usually do. I'm just going to go up to the top of this first sleeve. I think that's probably a safe place to go since I'm using two sticks. I just hot glue my sticks on it normally, especially if I'm going to be flying them relatively soon. I don't know. A great investment here. Blue gun that you don't have to turn on and off every time you need to use it. Just unplugs and then it's good to go for, I think you say it's good for like two or three minutes before it needs to be plugged back in. Yeah. Only thing that's left to do is fuse it and let her rip. Once again, thanks for listening. Um said I don't claim to know what I'm doing. I'm just kind of figuring this shit out every day as I go. Um if you decided to watch, I appreciate it. I will post an update when it's time to fly. Thanks, guys.